Okay, I'll make it four o'clock. I think we're good to go. So um, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Mark Varley. I'm the chair for this afternoon. Uh, we've got an action pack line up for the next two hours. Uh, we, we're starting with, with Jody. We then have Yuri, uh, Vincent, and then uh, myself at the end. So hopefully people will stay around till 5.30, uh, six o'clock. So uh, Jody, first of all, Jody Garnett, uh, as a man who needs no introduction, I think he's the busiest man at Phosphor G. Not at all. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I made it six talks and two workshops. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, Jody's a man of. Uh, uh, he's wearing several hats. Not only the beautiful one he's wearing today that he's famous for. Uh, so Jody's working for Location Tech, OSGO, uh, but more recently he's a uh, director at GeoCat. Um, and he's going to talk to us about open source procurement. So thank you, Jody. Oh, I get a microphone. Ah. So uh, thanks to everyone who attended my uh, talk this morning. I'm going to be so much more relaxed now that I can see you. Uh, that said, I do encourage heckling and uh, questions. I know we've got some questions near the end. Um, so I'd like to talk to you today about open source procurement. Um, I've already been introduced. Uh, I do work for GeoCat, but I do a lot of volunteer work with the Open Source Geospatial Foundation and also the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, GeoCat's a cheerful little company in the Netherlands. Uh, and here's the nice village it's based in. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about why open source. So just setting the stage for open source procurement. A lot of folks have been trying to speak about uh, keeping open source sustainable. So look up Paul Ramsey's talk. He's really good at going through the economics, um, how, uh, how we keep open source um, viable and looking into the, uh, digging into the systems that either help or hinder open source adoption. Um, there's also another nice uh, person who's in this room, which is how you can take part in open source if you don't have money. So Ian Turton has a great presentation on earning your support instead of buying it, and I recommend you check that out. Um, another person who occasionally talks about open source is myself. Um, if you're interested in this angle, um, a lot of the procedures and why the open source licenses matter, uh, have a look at understanding open source, or I, there's another one here on here to help. So this looks at how open source licenses can be used to uh, encourage and share our work with each other. Um, but as a professional, I'm mostly known as a community builder here, but I'm also a consultant. And as a consultant, uh, I tend to focus on risk. So one of our biggest risks in IT is the procurement of software and services. So this presentation starts to look at how open source can be um, incorporated into your uh, IT procurement process. So um, yeah, I'm going to go through that. So as any good community leader, I started my research on Twitter. There's a lovely group called GIS Chat. Do we have any people from GIS Chat? So every Wednesday, GIS Chat gets together and has a, a, a tweet up, as it were, and talk shop, and uh, serves to inspire everyone. So I asked them a question. What is your favorite hot dog? Uh, and this was a research for, uh, for the presentation we're doing here today. So the first answer I got was the traditional one. Someone actually lives in New York, I've never been, and uh, described how they really liked the traditional New York hot dog from like a street vendor. And uh, I think that's a great answer. So this is very... Um, uh, another one that we got is uh, commercial, kind of matches up with commercial off-the-shelf software. So first of all, when was the last time any of you bought software off-the-shelf? I think I might have bought like a video game for a PS4 or something, but that's about it. Uh, and so here we've got this. Uh, this person really loved the Costco hot dog. So uh, really, good, um, really good value for your money. But it is also a little bit of a loss leader. So you can see James here has gone in for a hot dog, but he's ended up buying a five pack of ketchup. Um, so the hot dog's a little bit of a loss leader. And uh, James was uh, kind enough to provide a, us a picture of a, of a Costco hot dog. 
So if I look at that commercial off the shelf hot dog, um, it is offering some great value. So it's a consistent, repeatable experience. We know what we are going to get. And it's actually suitable for bulk ordering. So commercial off-the-shelf software certainly does have its place. Now, if we're looking at the supply chain, we don't actually get to know too much about what goes into our hot dog. We can read the ingredients list. That might be a little bit terrifying. But we do understand the basics. There's a wiener, there's a bun, there's condiments. Um, if we're looking at commercial off-the-shelf software, similar value proposition. Great value if it fits your needs. Uh, we can share the development risk along a large installation base. And it's really great at common tasks. Customization might not even be possible. Um, and the other thing is sales teams are set up with feature comparison, white papers, benchmarks, lots of things to make your procurement decision easier. There's um, some drawbacks, though. There's a strong motivation uh, for customer lock-in. In the Costco case, it got him in the door and he bought like three years worth of ketchup. Um, uh, it's also as difficult in that healthy competition is, requ is required to encourage value. So the only reason the price of the hot dog is going down is because there's lots of competition. If there's no competition, hmm, the price kind of goes back up. Um, so it can be quite a challenge uh, to select technology here. So if we're comparing open source to commercial off-the-shelf software, um, we, can, we can go ahead. We can do a feature comparison. We can check the software capabilities. We can run benchmarks. We can check to see a history of use and similar engagements. Um, we also should take the larger picture, check the expenses associated, the ease of use, the performance, uh, training your staff in the new technology, and also the support and the life cycle. You know, software that updates every six months might be more expensive to run than software that uh, operate, updates every two years. So keep in mind, open source projects are often technology. They're not packaged as like a product, um, and they might not have sales or marketing material for you to check against. So this is a little bit of a self-serve. You're going to have to take some responsibility for doing that research yourself, or you're going to have to come by the OSGO booth and talk to our friendly helpers who uh, can introduce you to the technology. But you're only getting a small part of the story. So the next one I'd like to talk about is the in-house solution. So making a hot dog just the way your family recipe, just the way your parents used to make it. So here, I did do this research in the uh, US, and they have got some questionable choices about politics. Oh, I mean food. Uh, so the answer I got here was a chili cheese dog. Um, that looks like someone must love it, but it looks a little bit overwhelming to me. Uh, so many households choose to make their own hot dogs. You can build it exactly the way you want. You have complete control over your supply chain. You know what went into your love. A wiener, bun, condiments, and love. Um, but this can be expensive. You also have some, some difficulties here. When you're choosing the supplies for your hot dog, you can choose based on brands, taste, cost. Um, one of the reasons why we can do this safely is that we have government regulation of our foods. So we do uh, benefit from uh, oversight of the food supply chain. We're not going to get uh, upset tummy because we're pretty sure that uh, the food's been um, provided to us in a food safe manner. We can also choose um, our supply chain for our other reasons. So if we're really excited about organic food, or we don't like GMOs, we can, we can make that decision on purpose when we're looking at what goes into our, our meal. So for in-house software, it's a great approach if you are a good cook. Um, I mean, if you have developers on staff who are comfortable with software development. Although, you know, chances are your developers are going to start to use some open source libraries. Um, so even if you're going the in-house approach, often you'll find that your developers are starting to make use of open source, um, uh, even if it's just in terms of the tools required to build and compile the software you use in-house. In um, software development, though, does have some risks. Um, even if you are a software development shop, 
taking on a new custom um, uh, building a system for yourself in-house, it can distract your developers from your core business. Okay. Open source is a lot of the same advantage. The software can be adapted to fit your needs, um, and it can also just be used as a starting point. So many uh, in-house development starts by taking an open source um, project and forking off. Uh, it gives them a running start, they get their first initial release out, and they're really quite cheerful with the results. There's some drawbacks there, though. Um, so just, uh, we can, with open source, draw on the exper experts from outside our organization. We can also share maintenance and QA. If we fork, we won't, we won't realize that benefit. Uh, there's some risks. You do need to understand how open source licenses work. Not every open source project is set up for collaboration. Uh, I think we saw some examples at our event today where projects were set up by a single vendor, and that can be a risk. Okay. Next one I'd like to talk about is bout boutique software development. At least that's what it was called in Australia. Um, this is the idea of getting an expert to make your software for you. So, um, you know, you can hire someone who has a lot of experience making web maps and get them to make a web map for your organization. So in this case, the answer I got back, um, so they had a very advanced, this looks like it would be welcomed in Romania with shredded cabbage and blue cheese and salad dressing and all these ingredients and he had it in a, in a restaurant. Um, and then he was actually able to hunt down a picture of it for us. So this is an example of a gourmet hot dog that's been produced by an expert. So for our artisanal hot dog experience, we're delegating the creation to a chef that can make something yummy for us. Um, the chef can select based on what's fresh or inspirational. Um, some restaurants will actually develop a re relationship with the local farmers for that kind of, um, I wanted to say table to plate, I should have said farm to plate experience. Um, so, boutique software development uh, can be a useful trade-off between cost and risk. By having an expert, we're reducing our risk, but we do have to pay them. Um, and they, depending on their talent, we might pay them a lot, but it might be worth it for less risk. So, a common approach to this is to do an invitation uh, for bids from vendors. So we start with an expression of interest, and what's really happening here is we're inviting the experts to consider our problem, and the experts are going to come up with a bunch of novel solutions, and we're going to choose one. This is sharing the research um, uh, burden with the different vendors. So it provides a competitive process uh, for contract selection, but this is really optimized for large projects. Um, and sadly, in our industry, large projects are, are quite prone to failure. Um, we can see countless examples of, you know, projects by IBM or similar that have, you know, failed and caused kerfuffles. Um, the other thing is that this selection of a vendor is often the start of a long-term relationship. So you need to consider both that initial contract, but also the ongoing support relationship you're signing up to. So keep in mind, you are losing direct control of the technology used. Many of the solutions are still going to be built on open source, but you're trusting the, um, you're trusting the uh, contractor to make that decision for you. So this comes to one of the central points of my talk. So I should just slow down. Open source for procurement is all about giving you control control that you really might not be used to. It's control you really might not be comfortable with. So with the traditional um, approach there, we saw choosing a vendor. The vendor would propose a solution, and that solution would dictate the technology choice. With open source, we're asking you to do something different. We're asking you to look at a solution, make your technology choice, and then shop around for a vendor to support that vision. And this gives you a lot more power in the uh, relationship. So it's a different procurement workflow. Choose the most appropriate technology. The vendors are going to compete for support and features on your decision. And so open source renegotiates that vendor relationships. It provides customers far, far more control 
far more purchasing power. And you, I ask the people in this room, to make use of that power. It's your dollars, uh, and open source allows you a better way to make use of your dollars. I'm just going to pause. Any questions on that? Any feedback? It's kind of like my central message here. Yep. Jody, how would you differentiate? I think you're saying about understand what you're saying here around, around the, uh, the procurement process, but would it not be the same for a software as a service solution, whereby you know the vendors will give free access, perhaps as a, as a, as a commercial mm. free access to the software? So I got gotcha. When you chose that software as a service, yeah. uh, you signed up with one vendor, right? I don't know. Even during, sometimes in the procurement process, I mean, yeah. certainly in organisations I've been in, we, we look at five different vendors, and they'll all give us a free trial for maybe a month yeah. or something to kind right. of wet our appetite. Mm -hmm. and we'll select, select one of those. Yeah. So I can see that they. I, I, yeah, so I it's a similar. Kind of similar, similar approach, so I it's say. a similar workflow. Yeah. The difference is, after I've made the decision to use QGIS for a desktop. I'm not locked into a vendor. I can actually choose two vendors and see which one offers me a better deal. And I can sign a contract for two years, and if I don't like this, I can renegotiate and go with someone else. I'm not locked in. I can stay with my technology choice, and I have the purchasing power to change between vendors and not lose out on my decision. With the cloud scenario, you've committed to that platform and you're locked in. OK? OK, great. Yep. Since that being the central message, um, why do you separate solution and technology since it would always follow up in that order and solution technology kind of could be confusing? It seems to be the same thing. Okay, so in particular for the expression of interest process, we say we've got this problem and the vendors provide a proposal that outlines different solutions and we're going to choose amongst the proposals. Embedded in that solution is the technology stack that they proposed with. So one vendor might propose an open solution based on open source components. Another vendor might go with a different solution using like Oracle, Spatial, and other things. So we are the decision about what technology is used was given to the vendor as part of the solution. Does that change of power make sense? Yeah. yeah. So that's why I've separated it out. Okay. So my message here if you're new to this, is how the heck do you evaluate open source vendors? Um, so a good service provider can really help you benefit from open source, can offer a bridge from your concerns to the developer community. If you've come to one of these conferences and lots of folks at Phosphor G have said, join our community, and uh, you know, you're apprehensive, uh, you can always hire a service provider and they will join the community for you. That's perfectly valid. Um, the, Service providers can also offer you a voice in the project development roadmap, um, which is a, a nice thing. The service provider can gather up influence from a number of customers and help plan the features going forward. So please remember your buying power. Multiple vendors are competing for your dollar. That competition is ongoing. Just because you've signed up uh, with one organization to support GeoServer uh, last year doesn't mean you can't look um, at what organizations support GeoServer next year. <laughs> and the other one here is to take advantage of open source transparency. If you're entering a partnership with an organization, if you're researching a provider that's uh, giving you a commercial solution, you check into their history. You know, you do make a careful check of uh, their track record um, and, and so on. So you have a great deal of insight into how our open source service providers conduct themselves. Um, some folks have an expertise in using the software, which is great. Like, by all means, they're wonderful people to go to for training. Um, please also look at uh, organizations that have a history of contributing fixes on behalf of their customers. And we also uh, recommend uh, going with service providers that are core contributors, ones that help, um, help run the projects, help keep the projects sustainable. Okay. So easy to check. If I go to the QGIS website, this is broken out for me. Core contributors help with the maintenance. Contributors have made, func uh, made functional improvements to the software on behalf of their customer. And then there's a whole bunch of others. Okay, So you really want to make sure that the open source technology you are, uh, you are uh, selecting has a wide range of competition. That gives you confidence 
that this technology is a good choice and you're not going to be left kind of stranded or in a single vendor lock-in situation. We all like to talk about open source being as against vendor lock-in, but it's not true. Many open source projects are done by one person or one organization, so you need to check. Um, for other projects, we can go to the OSGEO website, and if I look at the bottom of the GeoNode page, I can see some core contributors for this project from a number of organizations. And if I click, I can get a list of other groups that offer GeoNode support. Okay. Everyone's looking a little bit stunned. I, this is a lot of like, hard-hitting financial risk. I, I hope you guys are okay with it. Uh, in terms of open source communities, my question, what's your favorite hot dog? This person's kind of fun. Do brats qualify for this? Definitely a brat. With sauerkraut and good mustard, I'm a, I'm a snob. And uh, he happily provides us a picture of his favorite hot dog. Now, this is a classic open source community. Uh, this person has strong opinions. They have the ability to make their own hot dog. And they've made a little variation on the hot dog formula. So. Uh, they're taking the hot dog template, they're adjusting it to fit, and they're going beyond the basics uh, of what's supplied. And so uh, you can be a snob, you can select ingredients you love, you, um, you bratwurst bun and condiments, and the crucial one here is good taste, or at the very least, your own taste, because you're the one who's gonna be enjoying the food. So the supplies are chosen with substance and style. So I love to celebrate our open source community. Um, it's, it's wonderful. So in evaluating an open source community, please keep in mind you're responsible for the technology you choose. You've got an unprecedented level of control, but it is very much used at your own risk. But it's a lovely way to fly. So when you start to look at the communities, if you're coming from business background, please look at it as the same detail you would if, as if you're starting a partner relationship. This is not a one-off, your technology decision. You are getting to, into bed financially. You're sharing risk. You're sharing your money, uh, financial commitment. You're sharing um, your future with a large group of people. So take a similar um, care in researching this relationship that you would with a, a partnership. So. Researching the participants. How do we do this? Dig into who's working on the project. Is it one person? Statistically, yes. Who do they work for? Is, is working on this something they do in their spare time, or is it their primary job function? Uh, open source gives you visibility to check who's working on it. Open source is often used just as a publication option, so recognize this as a subtle form of vendor lock-in. Is the organization um, your competitor? Um, if so, still not a down check. You might be able to get the open source project put in a vendor neutral organization like OSGU or the Eclipse Foundation. Um, and that can provide a nice uh, vendor neutral um, playground for even fierce business collaborators to uh, work together on, or, uh, on technology. Uh, you can dig into the commit history, the bug tracker, check out the oldest bug, why hasn't it been closed? Uh, look into the commit history. Do the contributions come from a core team or from outside the organization? What industries are uh, represented here as working with the technology? Uh, do all the organizations actually have the same customer? Then you're in trouble if that customer changes their mind. Uh, to help with this, we've got our OSGO incubation checklist. I have a talk about that tomorrow. But this looks at the risk assessment that OSGO does on, on open source projects. Now, finally, we've got the unexpected. Um, does peanut butter on, uh, on the bun banana dog with chocolate syrup on top? And I'm like, this really exceeded my imagination of what was in a hot dog. And then it got worse. He's like, dare I ask for a picture? And he's like, food photography is hard. No chicken syrup, so used a little honey. <laughs> I'm not sure this is now a vegan-friendly recipe uh, with chicken syrup, but you know. Uh, so the internet will surprise you. And requirement specification is really hard. So did that meet your definition of a hot dog? Using the cube rule of food, I'm going to in future define a taco as a wiener, or define a hot dog as a wiener taco. So supply 
chain considerations are there for you to look at. You can have really creative solutions uh, to make a hot dog that's uh, vegan friendly. Uh, quality assurance is important uh, in, in case the difference between chicken and chocolate is of concern to you. Um, and so here's my cube rule of food if you haven't seen it before. You, uh, the whole idea of if it's a sandwich or not is just passe. Um, we've got toasts, we've got sandwiches, we've got tacos, we've got sushi, uh, and the soup salad bowl thing, and finally like a calzone. So with this definition, uh, in the future this is the uh, wiener taco. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to move on because I'm probably out of time. My favorite hot dog, I'm even going to stand up for this because it goes with my hat, uh, is the democracy sausage. The famous Australian democracy sausage. Now, I can't say it's, it's any good, uh, but it... it <laughs> Uh, the democracy is bloody hilarious, but uh, so what's nice about the democracy sausages is they're great for getting people together. So it's like folded white bread. If you're lucky, it holds together before you're finished eating it. Fried onion, because that's a thing, and barbecue sauce. But it's part of a bigger picture. Voting is mandatory in Australia, and voting can be divisive uh, for a country. Groups uh, do fundraisers uh, next to the voting uh, stations called a sausage sizzle. So people can enjoy um, one of these democracy sausages and it helps bring our communities back together after election. So uh, I really like this idea of food. Uh, I like the idea of open source bringing folks together. So I choose to build a better world. Uh, we are together in open source. Open source helps everyone. Uh, work you do today helps someone else tomorrow. You can do more with open source. Uh, follow your experts and tag in others for help. So open source, safe, superior software. It really is a better way to make software, but have a look at the content of this talk. It really is a better way to do business.